Hey guys, Spring Free here. Today we are going to be taking a look at this brand new gun that I got. It's a Wii MSK with the Daytona gun kit inside of it. And I installed this myself, so I had a little bit of trouble. I did as much research as I possibly could. There's some really good videos online about how to do the lower and put that in. However, there is almost no information about the installation otherwise. Now, the good news is that mostly it's just a drop-in, but I wanted to make this video for you guys just so that you guys can see exactly how it goes in, because before you buy it, it's maybe not so clear. I will say that 90% of the things that you have to do to this gun are really intuitive once you have the kit and the gun together. When you're looking at it online, you may be wondering, you know, like, what's going on? It doesn't make sense. But when you get it, it makes a lot more sense. However, I still would have felt better purchasing this if I had seen a video like I'm going to do for you guys right now on how to disassemble and install the Daytona kit inside of a Wii MSK. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to disassemble this one. I already put it together. It shoots. You guys saw that already. And so we're going to take this guy apart. Now, it's going to be a little bit difficult because I only have the one camera. I don't know exactly where or how I'm going to mount this, but you'll see it's going to be pretty simple and I'll probably just do a bunch of jump cuts and if anything gets too blurry because I am using my GoPro, I will make some, take some stills with my phone and use those in place of the you know video footage if it gets way too super blurry. Anyway, so let's get started here. The first thing you're going to want to do is there are three pins that you're going to want to punch out. Now, I have this on the wrong side. You're going to want to punch these pins out as this guy here, this guy, and this guy, and you probably want to take off your handguard. Now, this handguard is not the one that comes with the gun. This is a real steel polymer handguard. I just like the look of it better, personally. However, um, if you, it's the same idea. You just want to punch out the pin for the regular guard that comes with this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll cut back to it, because I can't hold the camera and punch out those pins at the same time. They actually include a cool little tool that will help you punch out the pins uh, inside the box when you get it. And I find that the best tool to use to punch out pins is the uh, wooden hammer, because then even if you hit the metal on accident, it's not going to hurt it too much. Alright, so I'm going to punch out those pins with this cool tool that they included. Let's go. Alright, so once you punch out all four of those pins, then it should just come apart. Um, now the Daytona gun is a little bit tricky with how the upper and lower go together. You have to kind of feed the uh, tube into the back, so you can't just, you know, put the front pin in and slap it down like you can with uh, just regular MSK gas blowback or any of the AEG Masadas. So you have to kind of slide it off the front like this, like if you pull here, and I'm going to do this off camera because it's really hard to do with one hand, but just know that you have to basically take this and slide it straight off and that that's the only way you can really get it because there is a tube that needs to go in the hole back here, which we'll be able to see a little bit more later on when we actually take a look at the internals. Uh, another thing to note is that your pin on the top and your pin from the stock handguard are not self-retaining, so please do not lose those. Those are really important. All right, so I'm going to get this apart, and we're going to start and look at the two different halves. All right, so we have this thing split up between the upper and the lower now, and I can finally sit down because this is its actually small enough that I don't have to stand and hold the goddamn GoPro over my head. Now, let's take a look at the lower here, and there's nothing you have to mod in this gun, thank God, except for the selector switch, it's, and that's really easy. You just need a Dremel. Um, and then if you want to have the, uh, the bolt release in there, you have to trim the top off of that too, because it's a little bit too tall. Now, I'm also taking this apart here is the, the second reason why I wanted to was just to, you know, get a look and see how all the parts are doing on the inside. Everything looks like it's still brand new, which is fantastic. And there's actually a really good video on how to put together the lower that I'm going to link you guys in the description. And I'll let you guys watch that because he does a really good job of how to put all those little itty bitty parts and stuff that are in there. He shows you exactly how to put those in. Now, it comes like that from Tony Rizzo or, you know, Tank Guns, wherever you buy it from. It already comes assembled, but you have to put the trigger in, which can kind of be a bitch with all that stuff in there. So if you just pay attention how it comes, you can put it back together easy. But if you forget or get messed up somewhere, you can watch that video that's in the description on how to put the lower back together. Alright, and so let's look at the upper, because the upper was where I was really confused. Um, so the upper, the all you got to do is pretty much just drop the stuff in. You can see the bolt slides in there just like the, uh, the MSK and stuff like that. 
and we're going to get this apart and we're going to look at the individual pieces and talk about what they do and just give you guys a little bit better of an overview of the Daytona gun system and, and maybe give you a little bit of help if you're trying to put this together, maybe make it a little bit more intuitive for everything. All right, so I'm going to take this apart and we're going to get those little itty bitty parts out of there. All right, so the bolt just slides right out the back, just like the, you know, MSK one. This is my, the reason why I got this kit and felt comfortable putting it in is because it is literally a drop in plus or minus, you know, a few things that you have to Dremel. Um, now you, the things that you're going to be keeping from the old MSK is the, you want to keep the bolt guide spring thing, the gold, gold the rod. The actual spring you're going to change out because Tony will send you a new one from his, uh, from tank guns. They'll send you a new one. All right. And then to get that out, uh, it's just like the MSK, exactly the same as the MSK. Hopefully you guys can see this. Sorry, I know it's a little bit dark. The GoPro is not the best at getting low light capture. You just stick it and turn it and it slides right out. Now this can be a little bit confusing and it took me a minute to figure out how the hell I was going to get this uh, spring on here. And there's actually a pin that you can punch out here. Now, it was really kind of a bitch to punch this pin out. And I know you guys probably can't see it because it's dark. But th there is a pin here and I will take a still photograph with much better light and show you guys that exact pin because it's kind of a real bitch to get out of there. And if uh, when you get it back in, it's I don't think it's ever going to come out. Now, people have suggested to me on the forums that you're like supposed to super glue it or, you know, Loctite on there. But I don't see that ever working its way out. I'm about three to four hundred rounds into the break-in process and it has not moved at all. Now I bet you maybe like a couple thousand rounds down the line it might but I think at that point I'll go ahead and just it'll be time to you know take a look and relube everything anyways so we'll be able to inspect and see if there's any damage later on and I'll definitely let you guys know if I if that happens I'll do a little update for you. So it goes in this is the exact same bolt basically as the MSK you just put it in the exact same way push it through if it wants to. Sometimes it's a little difficult. It's like, no, I don't want to be put back together. Sorry. All right, so you put it back like that, and the bolt is good to slide right back into the upper receiver. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you was the actual like hop unit and everything and how that works. Now, that was kind of a bitch to get in there, so I'm not going to... Oh, sorry, here it is the hop unit and everything. Now that was a real bitch to get in there, so I'm not going to take it out, but I will take the barrel out and show you how that all goes together because that was kind of a little bit confusing and there's a bunch of Allen keys and stuff that you're like, what the hell do they even do? And I'll show you. All right, so be right back. So this was actually a real bitch to get out of the gun. Um, I think it's probably just because my MSK is rather new and hasn't really been broken in too much yet, as especially, you know, pulling the barrel in and out. So I assume that as it times goes on, it'll be a little easier to get this bad boy out of the damn thing. Now, uh, what I would recommend for you doing the new install, since there's, abs there's absolutely no keying at all or anything on this thing here that makes you or forces you to put it in a certain way. So you have to be really careful. This is where your hop is. So you want that on the top, obviously. So as long as that's on the top, then you should be good to go. However, like I said, there is no way to actually like, there's no uh, lines or index on there that force it to be up. So you could literally mount the hop up upside down and then have your BBs like super curved down. Now that's just one of the possibilities. So uh, one of the things I recommend though is that you get a longer inner barrel for just the beginning because it's really hard to get that thing out of the end there. Sorry, my uh, thing is threaded on there pretty tight. So if you get a longer inner barrel, that'll work out a lot better for you because you'll be able to do this and to get the barrel out, you can just, you know, tap it out like this because this thing is not going to just come out easily. You're, you're, this, this end here is going to be a real pain in the ass to get out if you need to later on. Now, just because of how much of a pain in the ass it was, I'm not going to do it. But all the hardware in there is very similar to AEG hop-ups. So if you've ever put one of those in before, it's going to work exactly the same. And we're going to take a look at the lower here now, because, or sorry, the upper receiver with the trunnion and everything inside of it. Now, this was a real pain, and this is where the hammer came in, very handy. Um, getting this thing in there, it's very tight, which I like. Uh, that's really awesome that it's tight in there. However, it did 
kind of take a while to get it all the way in. There's these little wings on it, and I'm try I'm gonna try really hard to get you guys. I think I'm just gonna have to take a still, and I'll put it up now of the little wings that are in there that hold it actually in place. Now it doesn't really do too much uh, because you know you have your other part of the barrel back there uh, holding it in mostly, but uh, they do kind of you know help. I've seen people where they've broken those wings off though, and it works fine. But it, they're still nice to have in addition. So this is pretty much, it's very easy to drop in. It literally took me only like three hours last night to put together myself. This is my first Daytona gun ever. And I took my time, like a lot of time, just because I wanted everything to be perfect. Now I'm going to go through here today probably and like lube up everything really good. Um, maybe I'm going to put some Loctite on some of these screws. Uh, we'll probably, I'm going to think, I'm, I think I'm going to see, I'm going to let it go for a little bit. I do notice one of these pins is coming coming out a little bit. I'll push it back in there. <laughs> you might these pins are really easy to take out. So when you install this, you might actually just want to take the entire trunnion off. These things just push out, and these are just Allen screws. So you just undo these four Allen screws and these two and push these two pins out, and this whole entire thing here comes off. And it's way easier to put that thing in there when it's not surrounded by all of this stuff here. All right, so that's pretty much all the parts. And we're just going to go through and put this thing back together. I think I'm going to put the camera in a place where you guys can just see everything, including me. So you guys will just get a really good feel for how it goes together. All right. So I'm going to try and figure out how to position this thing. Another thing you have to mod on these folding stock version, guys, is the butt plate for the folding stock. If you have the one with the battlefield, like, you know, buffer tube stock, I don't think it matters. I don't think you have to do this. But originally, there's something like this, sort of. I, I threw the part away because I just cut it off with a Dremel. But originally on these stocks, there's something like this that short strokes the pist the bolt for the MSK for the, uh, the ones with the folding stock. You have to actually cut that off because you don't need it and it gets in the way of the other stuff in the lower. So just in case you're wondering, um, you can use AEG stocks. You just have to modify the pinholes to make them a little bit bigger because the same plate they don't go through in the same place in the MSK as the AEG. So like the the Masada Fix stock and the Masada PRS Sniper stock, they will both fit onto the Daytona gun, and you don't have to add any material here because you have to actually remove material from the folding stock because there's this weird like little penis thing that you got to cut off in order to make it actually fit. In order to be able to insert the bolt catch uh, into the Daytona gun, you actually have to remove this piece here. And then uh, this is what it looks like now in the lower here. And as you can see, without that part on it, it clears the like the, everything else. Um, it doesn't really serve any purpose in the Daytona gun, uh, except for it to look pretty. In the future, Tony is going to come out with some new uh, bolt releases that will actually work if you have the uh, those, those mags with the follower that goes up into the hop-up chamber. So that'll be cool for the MSK in the future. They already make it for the M4 and the other Daytona gun, some of the other Daytona guns, but they have not come out with it yet for the MSK. But that should be out soon. Anyways, now I have my cool selector switch in there and, or not selector switch, the bolt release, and it doesn't look like it's missing parts anymore. All right, so hopefully you guys are in a good position to see most of the stuff that's going to go on here. I have my phone doing the preview here so I can kind of adjust and do things to make things look a little better, like move that shit out the way. <laughs> All right, so to reassemble the gun, what you do is you first probably, you probably want to save the barrel for last because that's kind of a pain in the balls to get in, and it's a lot easier when you have the leverage of like the grip and stuff. All right, so all right, you're just going to take the bolt here, your bolt, just like the MSK, and you just slide that baby right in the back here. And she slides in nice and fine. Make sure that it lines up down here, because if it doesn't, then you're going to break something. <laughs> it, it'll line up and go in the tube that, that's already in the trunnion. All right, so then you're going to take the upper and the lower, get your hair out of there with the flank. That happens when you have long hair like me. All right, and so you take both sides like this, and you put them back together. Now you can't just, you know, put it like this and just go wham, because you'll break your air shaft. So what you have to do is kind of wiggle it in there and you can watch the air shaft go into the hole that it's supposed to be in. Now, I really hope there's an easier way to do this and maybe somebody will make fun of me in the comments section for uh, doing it this way because I'm an idiot, but I have not figured out a way to do it since. Okay, so you push it in like that. And then uh, you have to get over the feed tube for the BBs. So you have to lift the front up just a hair, just a hair, so that it can slide over that lip. 
and then it snaps right in. Then you can squoosh everything into the back, squish it down back here too. All right, and then get everything nice and lined up for your pins. Everything goes very easy. This is like the fourth or fifth time that I've done this, put it back together and taken it apart. And every time it's gotten significantly easier. So if it's the first time that you're doing it and it's really been a pain in the balls, don't worry. Uh, that's how it is supposed to be, I think. <laughs> All right. And if it gives you a little trouble, you know what? You're going to get out your wooden mallet and you're going to pop away. Like So there's these pins here on the back. And we're just going to finish them off with the wooden mallet. I love this wooden mallet because it doesn't do any damage to any of the other parts of the gun. Like, I've hit the barrel and stuff and made marks, and they just wipe off with your hand. So if you have a wooden and or rubber mallet, I would definitely recommend using that as the tool to bang stuff in and stay away from metal hammers at all costs because they will scratch the shit out of your stuff, obviously. All right, so now I'm going to put the barrel in for you guys. Okay. This is an 18-inch barrel. Um, this is probably way overkill. I have a CQB. Uh, some, if, you, if you're having trouble getting it in, I like to rack the bolt because then it drops in a little easier. So this is the CQB. Or sorry, this is the, the, car, the rifle length one. So I've got an 18-inch inner barrel in there, which is a ridiculous length. And if you have the opportunity, I would definitely purchase the CQB barrel because that is definitely going to be more manageable here and in on the, like putting it together and on the field. All right, and then so you just want to get everything lined up nice and lined up. Now sometimes it's a little difficult, I've noticed, to get everything just so. But hey, you know what? That's that's what airsoft guns are about. And honestly, guys, like 50%, if not more, of the fun of airsoft for me is putting the gun together in the first place. So like a kit like this was just freaking fantastic to be to do because it was just freaking awesome. All right, so get it good and tight on there. You don't want it to wobble back and forth because the way that this quick detach rail or barrel works, it, it is does have a tendency to wobble. Now then you just put your handguard back on and push the pin in and you are ready to fucking rock. All right, so uh, basically all you need from the actual MSK in the first place is the trigger. The guide rod for the for the uh, the bolt. You don't actually need the spring on it, so if that's messed up, who gives a shit? Um, and the selector. So the selector does need to be modded, and I will show you. I'll put some stills about how to mod the selector, and I will also link, like I said, to that video of how to put the lower together because that's kind of hard. And I know my camera hates me already, so it's probably not going to do that very nicely at all. Um, the other thing is that I was going to do now is mod the uh, the little. Uh, bolt release here because it's too long actually for it to fit in the gun so this guy here you need to chop the top of him off a little bit because this part gets in the way of the Daytona gun parts so I'm just gonna cut this guy probably like right here um, I'll probably rewatch that video that I linked in the description and then once I have that done I'll be able to drop this guy in and it'll look really fierce guys it'll look fierce as hell all right so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, I'm going to roll some footage of me just shooting the gun now, and it's going to be really cool. Just more of the stuff that you saw probably at the beginning of the video. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Spray and pray out.